I haven't found a spin-off that I wanted to buy in at least a year and a half. And that is frustrating. And I look around and when I look at the returns that I can find on the internet of other great value investors, I see that they, in a lot of cases, aren't doing so great over the past few years. So I figured they're frustrated as well. So my thought is, hey, I might not be the only person out there who's frustrated with their inability to find a ton of great opportunities. And the question is, what, what do you do about that? And when I thought about it, I came up with, you know, three op options of what you can do. First, you can sit patiently like a Zen master. Second, you can look in new areas to find new strategies that might work or new geographies or in some way expand the opportunity set for yourself. And the third way is you can lower your standards and buy things that aren't quite good enough. And before I got too deep into this, you know, theoretical thought experiment of what, what I should do about this frustration, I realized, hey, there's a great example, a great investor who I can look at their history and say, you know, what would Warren do? <laughs> what did Warren do? Because obviously Buffett has been through several periods in his career where he could not find great investment opportunities. What did he do? And I am particularly drawn to the early 1970s for a lot of reasons, one of them being I feel like Buffett nailed that decade. And so what was Buffett doing in the early 1970s when he, he couldn't find great investments? He had shut down his investment partnerships at the end of 1969. He was retired. Um, what did he do? He was running Berkshire Hathaway, and Berkshire Hathaway had 17% of its investment portfolio in stocks. The rest was mostly in Muni and other bonds. Of that 17%, what, what stocks did Berkshire own? It was a lot of bank stocks. It was also investments in diversified retailing and blue chip stamps, his other investment vehicles, which were eventually you know, rolled into Berkshire Hathaway. He was writing covered calls on some investments, including some down and out calls, which I had to look up the meaning of. Um, blue chip stamps had bought control of source capital and blue chip stamps had also bought C's candies. Um, the third thing, or the other thing that Buffett was doing in the early 70s was he was fairly heavily involved in the Boys Town investigative journalism story that eventually won a Pulitzer for the Omaha newspaper, I think the Sun, that Buffett owned at that time. So what was he doing? To put it into our framework of those three options, he was not lowering his standards. He had not a ton invested in stocks at this time, only 17%. He was still investing in things that made sense. So when Seize Candy came around, he saw it as a great opportunity and he seized it, even though it was sort of outside of his, you know, historical pattern of, he actually bought a whole company uh, and it wasn't so cheap. So he was changing, but still pursuing a great opportunity. He was still doing stuff that he thought made sense, like writing covered calls and um, buying cheap bank stocks. And he was distracting himself from the market by being heavily involved in this journalism case. So that's, that's what we take from this. So, so what are the lessons for me and maybe for you if you're also feeling frustration? First, be on your guard. I should be on my guard for lowering my standards because that that happens. If you look at Buffett in 1987, he had experienced the same frustration. What did he do? He went out and bought a big chunk of Salomon Brothers and almost immediately regretted it. What did he do before 2000 when he had had, you know, years of not being able to buy too much that was good? He went out and he bought General Re, which also almost immediately brought him a lot of frustrations. So we have examples of even Buffett lowering his standards and regretting it. We need to be on our guard now against this. And something that seemed to help Buffett was a non-investment activity. In his case, you know, <laughs> hunting down Boys Town, um, a charity that was taking in too much money and not spending it on its stated goals. 
follow that distraction or if you're excited about something that isn't the market it's okay to go with that it can prevent you from making a stupid mistake in the market so it's okay to be distracted it's okay to go off into left field and you know pick some flowers for a while if that allows you to avoid making stupid investments if that allows you to release the energy that you have without buying things it's totally okay to do and keep doing the things that keep produce opportunities that work for you so if it's small bank stocks or covered calls or no whatever the analogy is for you keep doing those but again you don't have to put hundred percent of the portfolio into them just keep doing them in the same sort of sizes that have worked for you in the past that's what I take from this especially the part about not lowering my standards because I think that is the quicksand that we sort of start seeping into after years of frustration with no end in sight so don't do that <laughs> don't be like Buffett in 87 or Buffett in 99 be like Buffett in the early 1970s stick to your guns and do what you need to to do that thanks everybody I will be in Omaha next week for the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting on Saturday so if you're in town you want to meet up and get some coffee hit me I'm on Twitter I'll put the my handle up there you can uh, you can tweet me thanks guys <laughs> bye